January 22nd, 1973, Roe v. Wade is the historic Supreme Court decision overturning a Texas interpretation of abortion law and making abortion legal in the United States. The Roe v. Wade decision held that a woman with her doctor could choose abortion in earlier months of pregnancy without restriction and with some restrictions now in some states uh, based on the right to privacy. Talk more about Roe v. Wade here in a minute. Um, I, this weekend is what has nationally come to be known as the Sanctity of Life um, weekend to continue to observe and remember uh, this atrocious uh, Supreme Court decision um, in 1973. So this makes what now, 38 years? Am I getting my math correct? I am, aren't I? 38 years. And so uh, I've been trying to observe this in some way every year to constantly keep us aware and um, affirmed in what it is that we're doing. Uh, today is not going to, you know, the more I thought about it all week, I just really struggled how to do this differently this year. And, and I realized I'm not preaching today. I'm, I'm just going to have a conversation with all of you. And at times it may even seem like I ramble a bit. And if I do, forgive me. Um, but uh, this is a topic that really, really um, stirs a lot of emotion in me, a lot of anger and a lot of grief, um, as well as a lot of appreciation uh, because it reminds me of what I do have and what wasn't taken from me and what I wasn't um, deceived into thinking and how various choices that we make uh, change our entire world. I think about uh, September 11, 2001, also familiar with that date, and we know that close to 4,000 people, innocent people, were killed on that day. Innocent people, men, women, children. And the world was outraged, and so it should be. What an injustice, what a travesty, what a horrific crime against humanity. And yet, on September 12th, another 4,000 innocent people were killed. And you didn't hear the outcry. And by the way, also on the 13th, and the 14th, and the 15th, and every single day after, 4,000 approximately abortions take place on average a day in this country. Uh... I don't know if you've been keeping up with the news, but I just can't help but see the hypocrisy in the way that, um, uh, whether it be politicians or various and sundry people in society are in regards to this topic. But something has been in the news recently and has called, caused great outrage. Uh, there is a doctor, and I use that term very, very loosely here, obviously, uh, by the name of Kermit Gosnell. He's 69 years of age, and he has been in the abortion business for 30 plus years. And just recently is being held accountable uh, and, and, and are beginning to discover this... Um, this man's terrible deeds over the last three decades. And uh, maybe some of you have been seeing it on the news, and I, I notice there's more kids than I thought we'd have here today, so I have to be very careful, of, and I don't want to be too graphic, but, but um, one of the quotes here uh, at the end is made by the district attorney, and it kind of summarizes my outrage in this whole thing, Okay. The, the uh, district attorney in Philadelphia says, I'm aware that abortion is a hot topic button. He's telling this to reporters. He says, but as dist district attorney, my job is to carry out the law. A doctor knowingly and systematically mistreats female patients to the point that one of them dies in his so-called care commits murder under the law. 
And it is. It's tragic. He, he, he was just a butcher. And um, he just, um, there were many women who had been mistreated, but this is one who died. And the thing that really gets me about this is there's not a big amount of consideration and concern of three decades of killing babies. And uh, the amazing thing is, though, is that they are saying something about that he's performed some illegal abortions, i.e., in that particular state, if you're uh, over 24 weeks and you perform an abortion, that's illegal and is going to be charged with eight counts of murder that they can prove. Where is the sense and sensibility of people to think that because you're 24 weeks and one day pregnant, it's illegal? But if you're 23 weeks and six days, he would have been just fine. He'd have continued to rack in, check this out, $10,000 per day. He's a millionaire several times over before this. And yet, people are going to stand up, many people, in, in outrage because some of the uh, abortions he performed were past the 24 week, which is just a little over, what, six months. And I want to have this dialogue with us and uh, just, just chat about this because I hope and I pray and I, I'm certain that we're all in agreement that, that this is wrong. But we need to constantly be aware. Um, I met with somebody this week and we started telling stories and, and, and this guy uh, was talking about Dachau, West Germany. I mean, that's not something that comes up very often, but wow, it came up in conversation. Well, Vera and I had gone to this concentration camp in, in Germany uh, back in the early 80s. What a terrible terrible place of death. It was so bad. The spirit of death and evil was still lingering around that camp to where I couldn't even finish uh, going through that camp. And uh, we had to leave. Um, and you think, well, why do you have a camp like that around? That camp should stand for time immortal. Why? To remind people of what human beings can do to other human beings. And so today is kind of that, uh, an affirmation of, and, and maybe a rekindling of a topic that nobody wants to look at, nobody wants to think about, nobody talks about, but we need to. We need to have this conversation on an annual basis. And I asked myself questions this week. I mean, tons of questions. And, uh, you know, how did we get to this point? I, I say we as a, as a nation. How did we get to this point um, where supposedly... You know, this is a private issue between a doctor and a woman about a decision regarding her body. Almost as if, you know, are you going to have a tummy tuck or are you going to have an abortion? You know, they're on the same par, medically speaking, in decision making. How do we get to a point where that is the case in making a decision about a human being that has been created? Even in my lifetime, my short lifetime, it's just absolutely unbelievable that we could get to this point in, in our world. Um, how do you deal with this topic today? You know, it's, it, is anybody's mind ever going to be persuaded? Is anybody going to change their, their mind in this issue? Will Roe v. Wade ever be overturned? Um, yeah, it's a real dividing issue. I understand that. Um, you know what? And it should be. It should be. My question is, because this happened to me, oh, wow, I have to really search back. It was, it was in the early 90s, and I was, I was doing the Sanctity of Life Sunday as usual, and I had a lady come up to me afterwards. Totally, totally. I mean, it, it, I couldn't have been more struck in, than if you had hit me with a two-by-four right between the eyes when she told me that she's pro-choice. I'm pro-choice, Tom. Well, and yet for me, you know, I wouldn't do that, but, you know, it's legal and it's not my choice, but 